the divine consort, the mother of demons, hell's mighty queen, the original Eve, she is Lilith. To some she was seen as a wicked goddess, while others considered her a terrifying demon that was associated with childbirth but in a demonic connotation. People believed she was a sinister presence who not only snatched newborns but also drained them of their blood and essence, leaving only bones behind to be chewed upon. As one of the most terrifying demons in Mesopotamian myth, her actions were not just limited to pregnant women or children. She would also drink the blood and eat the flesh of men. She infected dreams until only nightmares were left. Wherever she went, she was followed by sickness, disease, and death. Lilith is also seen as a powerful entity of seduction and linked to matters of sexuality. But there's more to it. She is also closely linked with danger and death. She's said to lurk in the shadows, especially during the dark of night, and has a rather chilling reputation. According to a legend, Lilith existed before Eve. Unlike Eve, who was believed to have been created from Adam's rib, Lilith was made from the same clay as Adam. But Lilith decided to leave the garden. This left Adam feeling lonely. God, witnessing Adam's loneliness, decided to create a new companion for him, which resulted in the creation of Eve. But how does this transition to Lilith, becoming the queen of demons? Well, let's break it down. As Lilith roamed the early earth, she had an encounter with Archangel Helel, commonly known as Lucifer. Their meeting took place shortly after the fallen angel had received a reprimand from God. During their conversation, Lucifer was able to persuade Lilith to join his side. He argued that since she, like Adam, was created from clay, they were equals and should not be subject to Adam's authority. He assured her that she should be free and independent, not controlled like a puppet. Lilith found Lucifer's words enlightening and chose to associate herself with him. Once Lilith made the choice to leave the sacred grounds of Eden and her spouse behind, she journeyed to a cave near the Red Sea. This cave was known for its excessive and sinful energies, inhabited by beings called incubi and succubi, which are associated with seduction and immorality. Lilith became intimately involved with these demons, giving birth to hundreds of demon offspring. God had witnessed everything, and in response, he sent three angels to persuade Lilith to come back to Eden. To the angel's reprimand, Lilith harshly replied, Leave me alone. With her refusal, God did not also take no for an answer. The angels then threatened her demon offspring by killing 100 of them daily which led Lilith to come up with a compromise. She explained to the angels that her purpose was to weaken human infants and will leave the woman and child alone if she sees an amulet inscribed with the names of the angels. She then claimed authority over the children, stating that if they were boys, she would have control over them from birth until the eighth day. And if they were girls, her dominion would extend from birth to the twentieth day after all chaos and horror that Lilith vested upon humankind. Lilith found herself isolated, lonely, and in need of companionship. After all, she is still a woman. She takes to the skies in search of male companionship and encounters the cherubim, childlike angels close to God's throne. She attaches herself to these angels and would not let go unless God were to create a man for him. At that time, God had separated Lilith and Cherubim to ponder if maybe she and Adam can become one again. But Lilith saw Adam and Eve in harmony. She tried returning to Cherubim, only to find that the gates of heaven closed for her. With God's dismay towards her action, he banished Lilith back to her chambers in the Red Sea. However, after the fall, he releases her from her underwater prison. Now free, Lilith roams the world, staying in the shadows during the day and emerging at night. She grows lonely once more and returns to Adam. After lying with him, Lilith becomes pregnant, although some late medieval texts suggest that this happened against Adam's will. Despite her initial return, Lilith leaves Adam. Eventually, she bears more demon offspring with the demon, Cain. After the angels fall and Lilith's complete separation from heaven and humanity, 
she eloped with Samael, a fallen archangel. Their union led to Lilith giving birth to more Lilim, mischievous and dangerous demons similar to Succubi, whom she personally raised and trained. Often employing harsh and ruthless methods, the growing population of hell with demons and being practically Lucifer's spouse. It is safe to say she truly was hell's queen. God only growing furious with the absurd evilness, he imprisoned Samael and condemned him to the circle of treachery, sending those three angels again to execute Lilith's children as they had warned her they would. Following her being kicked out from the Garden of Eden and Heaven, Lilith ventured into the ancient earth, encountering its prime and beastly land. Because she had borne the demons now inhabiting hell, Lilith decided to create earthly monsters as well. In some accounts, she was considered the mother of all vampires and monsters, earning her titles like the first vampire and also the mother of monsters. Her association with vampires was rooted from her creation of the Turokhan, believed to be the first vampires in history. Now let's dive into a more detailed depiction of Lilith, her physical appearance. Surely this queen must have a charm behind all the madness. In ancient Babylonia, they present her as a beautiful naked sylph with bird wings, taloned feet, and hair contained under a cap decorated with several pairs of horns. She stands atop two lions and between two owls, apparently bending them to her will. Lilith's association with the owl, a predatory and nocturnal bird, speaks of a connection to flight and night terrors. Meanwhile, in Jewish folklore, Lilith's looks can change depending on the tale. In some stories, she appears as a seductive woman with beautiful, flowing hair. However, in other accounts, she takes on a more fearsome form as a night demon, with messy hair and wild, unsettling eyes. This depiction of Lilith is often linked to the concept of a succubus, a supernatural entity associated with seduction and harm. Although Lilith was presented as treacherous, a source of pure evil and fear to mankind during ancient times, in our world today, the depiction of Lilith has evolved and taken on an empowering symbol of feminine strength and autonomy in feminist groups. She represents a rejection of traditional gender roles and societal expectations placed on women. Many feminists find inspiration in Lilith as a symbol of women's liberty. Her story encourages women to assert their identity. Lilith's seductive qualities represent sexual freedom and the rejection of societal taboos. She symbolizes the right to express desires openly, as well as a representation of the darker aspects of femininity. She embodies strength, fierceness, and even chaos, encouraging people to accept their shadow selves. As we come to a close with our tale, the journey of Lilith, from her origins as a menacing entity to her modern-day symbolism reveals a fascinating transformation. Long seen as a symbol of fear and malevolence in ancient times, Lilith has now become an emblem of feminine strength and autonomy. Her story inspires women to assert their identity, rejecting traditional gender roles and societal expectations. As a figure that has evolved over time, Lilith stands as a powerful symbol of empowerment, reflecting the changing perspectives and roles of women in our modern world.